Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Market Update. I'm your host, Larry McCain with the American Financial Network. I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope Santa came and brought you chess and abundance of gifts, of joy, um, time with family. I just hope it was a great Christmas for each and every one of you. As you know, in 2020, uh, Christmas was a lot different for us. We were uh, just experiencing uh, the full throes of the virus. Naturally, there wasn't a lot of uh, pre preventative maintenances besides, or measures, I should say, besides just staying away from people and not hanging out with folks. And so this year in 2021, um, we're able to go out and spend time with loved ones. I've been just, it's been a joy for me to spend time with my dad and with other family members, you know, where last year everybody was just trying to kind of stay at a distance. And so uh, I hope Christmas was great for you. I hope you all just, of course, remember the, uh, the spirit of Christmas, which is giving, you know, um, what I realize is that the most precious gift you have to give is your time. And during the holidays, especially during Christmas, we, we usually kind of take a, a little extended vacation, relax a little bit, spend more time with family and friends, and, and then get into reflection as we look towards 2022 or the new year. And so as you're spending this, this, uh, this Christmas weekend with your family, with your friends, and this time, just enjoy each and every moment. Know that in, in our mortality, time is short. You know, we never know when that moment will be. Uh, for a lot of us, you know, this is our first or second or third, or we have ex experienced loss, but a lot of us have experienced major loss. And so the holidays, we normally, we feel that. And so it's always a good reminder to just be grateful and to just enjoy each and every moment. So I hope each and every one of you enjoyed Christmas time. Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. It is always a joy. It's a pleasure to... Uh, to just uh, be able to present to you great information. I love doing what I do. I love connecting with a lot of folks, a lot of you all. In fact, every time I, we put out a video, we get lots of calls and messages. And so um, I, I just, I find it, it's a way to connect with a lot of people. And, you know, what, one of the things I realized in life is that when you try to cater to everyone and to make everyone happy, you can't do it. And so really when you're speaking, you gotta remember you're speaking to your audience there's a huge audience out there for you to speak to. You just have to, you just have to be confident first, knowing that folks are, are, are watching. And if you're speaking truth, they'll feel it. And so, again, thank you all uh, for reaching out. Thank you all for connecting with me and walking with me. And, uh, and thank you all for the calls and emails and, and whatnot. I'm just excited about 2022. I'm excited about what's in store. And, uh, of course, it, it leads me into this great video. All right, I got two major emphasis today. I want to speak to, of course, first-time home buyers, and I also want to speak to yes, agents out there, um, but really all buyers in general. But the reason why I say agents is because this is more industry talk, um, but it's really good information for for buyers out there because we're seeing some things out there that you all should be aware of as well. Okay, first-time home buyers, listen up very, very closely. You know, there's a graphic I'm going to put there, put up on a screen uh, for you. You know, I came across this, uh, you know, recently and I just, I just kind of cringe because it, we see it, those of us in the industry, we see it coming like a slow moving train, like a cartoon train. It's crazy. Uh, share of first time U.S. home buyers drops to historic lows due to soaring prices. Hey, first time home buyers, I, I get it. We see it. We're experiencing it with you. You know, from last year to this year, just such a huge drastic change. I mean, there was a window, I remember, during the initial parts of COVID where we were getting, you know, great deals for our buyers out there. You know, rates were still very good, you know, not rivaling today, not too much more than today uh, for the most part. But we were getting great rate, uh, I mean, great um, uh, deals for the buyers out there. But, of course, you know, things have changed because we're all working remote. And so that's impacting, of course, you know, inventory and pricing, because we're seeing it soar everywhere. And so, again, first time home buyer, I, I really want to connect with you on this one. Um, whether or not you're working with someone else uh, or you're just thinking about getting in the game, please listen up very, very closely. You know, folks always ask us, when is the best time to buy? You know, our folks will always ask us, when is the best time to sell? You know, that, that same quintessential thought of, 
you know, when is the best time to, to buy low and to sell high? Well, for buyers, particularly first time home buyers, right now is your time. You know, I can't, I can't emphasize it more. You've been following me, of course, on this journey for quite some time. I've been saying this for since the past, since, since COVID, of course, we've been doing a lot more videos that really prompted us to do more videos because of just, you know, changing how we as we had to change the industry and you're seeing it here on the graphic. Um, it's, so you've got a couple things going on. The cost of money is very low. Number one, cost of money is very low. There's a, another graphic I'm going to put on the screen right there. And you're going to see uh, the housing uh, forecast. And it talks about, of course, you know, the, the cost of pricing and things of that nature as well. And so we already know that baked in for 2022, the Fed has already said they're going to do three rate increases. Three, that's minimum. They may do more. Why? Well, inflation. And of course, you guys have been following me. Go back to my other videos. You'll see all the information there. You know it's right there in front of you. They've got to get their handle on inflation. And the only way to do that is to stop with the excessive money supply that we've been experiencing, of course, throughout this uh, very interesting time that we're living in right now. And so what we're, here's the projections, as you see with the, with the, the forecast on the screen. Fannie Mae has this projection at 3.3%. Freddie Mac at 3.5, you know, the, the, the MBA at 4.0, the NAR at 3.5, all these different industries has their projections. So, so right now, we're at a lower average today, kind of in the low threes. Last year, we we're in the upper twos. And so, as you can see, we're moving further and further up. What does that mean? First time home buyer, the cost of money is going to become more expensive. It really is. That's what it means. And so, your purchasing power is going to dry up. And the, so, so the more you wait for your perfect deal, and first-time homebuyers have that pension, they have that thought, they want to get that perfect deal, and we get it. You know, we're taught to, to economize, to maximize, to do the right thing, and we haven't made a purchase like that before in our life, and we want to make sure we're making the correct purchase and doing the right thing. But sometimes, you know, there's a, there's a thing where we can just be overanalyzing ourselves uh, to, to paralysis, and it happens. We've seen it. We've seen it. I, I, quick story, quick story. I'll get back to this chart. You know, we were helping someone. I, I want to say it was 2015. First time home buyer, um, veteran family, beautiful family, pre approved for, I want to say at the time, 350. And so we were helping them in Elk Grove. And the home at the time, I want to say two story home, you know, a newer home in the 2000s, I want to say, you know, built. Uh, 2,200 square feet or so with a pool. And this was at 310, 315, 325. And, uh, you know, you didn't have this multiple bidding situation going on back then. And so uh, these folks were like, mm, no, they just picked over it. No, 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 no. And, and their thought was, well, we just think it's going to keep going down. We just, we don't see it. We, we just came out of this situation. We just can't see it. We know it's going to go back down. Remember, they were seeing prices coming out of 2008 through 14, where, of course, that volatility was being worked out. And so a lot of times folks aren't really forecasting what's going to be happening, but they're just going by their gut feeling, I guess. And so, um, you know, suffice it to say, you know, these folks decided to pass. And that same house that was 325 back in 2015 is like 675, 700, 750. I mean, it's, it's just... It's, it is super expensive, and naturally, they price themselves out of the market. What's 325 is not in their ideal area, and what happens is folks end up moving and migrating to different places, you know, Arizona and, you know, um, all the different places that are more affordable, Nevada, and that's what we've seen, you know, unfortunately, that takes place. You're seeing it. It's in the news, right? And so, conversely, we've had folks that we've worked with that during those same times said, you know... I don't know if I can qualify for a home. We're like, hey, give it a shot. Get pre-approved. The, the worst you can, the worst they can tell you is that you're not ready today, but you can be ready at a later point. And so they're like, okay, let's give it a shot. And they did. They trusted us, of course. And other, you know, colleagues out there, same thing. I mean, I had the same. We had the same conversation when we're in industry meetings. We haven't done a lot of those in quite some time because of COVID and whatnot. But we're starting to do a little bit more, of course, you know, through you know things like this. But you know, same thing, the same experiences they were having as well. And um, 
So what happened is, you know, back then they, they took that lead, bought that 325,000, 330,000 our home. And today they're selling that home for 525, 600, whatever it is. And they're able to now buy that 800, $900,000 home. Or in a lot of cases, they're cashing out, buying a home in other states, also investing their money. That's how they're using their money to work for them, folks. So that's how you do it. Again, you got to get yourself in the game in order to make that happen. All right, so another thing too, going back to this uh, chart. So remember, uh, <laughs> actually, when I was looking at this chart, it was a running joke. I'm like, you know, um, I've lived through all these decades. Yes. You know, it's interesting when you, when you realize it, that you've lived through these decades and you've made progress through it, you realize that, okay, you, you paid attention to what's taken place, but you're still always a student because life continues to change. And that's what's humbling about this experience we call life. But the realities are, it's very cyclical. So go back to the 70s and the 80s. Look at the chart. You'll see the average rate was a lot higher than it is today. Well, what do you think that had an effect on pricing? Well, pricing was a lot lower. So that's how average everyday Americans were able to buy homes. Of course, there were different programs that were introduced in the 80s to help, you know, to encourage more home ownership naturally and, and, and laws and things of that nature. But folks took chances. They got up there. They knew that if they, they were always told real estate is something you can invest in that will always make money for you when they did that. That's what I saw in the Bay Area. You know, I saw that in the San Francisco Bay Area. I saw that in the San Jose Bay Area, uh, South Bay Area, you know, growing up there as well. And, and folks, I remember folks that were just average everyday folks, you know, owning these, these uh, decent homes in Cupertino and, and, you know, Palo Alto and others that are mega million dollar homes now, you know, and it was just, they decided, hey, you know what, I want to buy a home because I know that no matter what happens in this lifetime, it will appreciate. And so the relationship of this chart, again, going back to your personal home buyer, as you see, as we get closer, moving to the 90s and 2000s, and the rates continue to go down, a lot of that is because of geopolitical situations, of course, that you can research during that time. Um, again, happen to grow through that. And then to where we are at today, where money is very, very, very cheap. And so when you have that, what's the inverse relationship? Higher prices. And so... Not only do you have higher prices and homes, everywhere, inflation is way out of control and the, and the Fed knows it, everyone knows it. Um, you know, I wish the, polit the politicians would be honest and say, we need to stop it all together and really play nicely. Then we'd have a really good balance and it'd be good for everyone, but it is what it is, unfortunately, folks. And so, but we've got to get to a place where it's not hurting the global economy or local economies. And so that's why they've got to raise rates. And so again, first time home buyers, and those that have been sitting on the sideline, again, this is your time. The money is your cheapest right now. Get into the game and get your home and start generating that wealth, that generational wealth that everyone else has been doing here in this country. One last thing before I leave you on this point is, again, the hedge against inflation. Going back to this chart here that I'll be, I'll be placing here on the screen. Imagine if you made home ownership a priority for you and your family. Of course, during 2021, 2020, you see what the relationship looks like. You see it in your, of course, uh, your portfolio. Of course, you see your values. We've got great tools for you too. In fact, um, if you want us to send you a valuation tool, it tracks monthly for you, gives you options. My contact information there is on the screen, naturally. Uh, email us, text us, contact us. We'll send you a link. I've got several different tools that'll help monitor the value in your area. And it will tell you exactly you know, where things look and also give you an idea of, of good rates as well, too. We're still doing refinances and helping folks save because there's still a few folks um, that haven't done that. So if you need to do a refinance, if you need to lower your rate, give us a call. My contact information is there as well. We love to help you also. All right. Just as I said, I have something for agents, but really it's for all buyers, but it's just our industry folks who love to track this information. There's the graphic on the screen. Sales of newly built homes tank as affordability hits buyers. Hey, it's, it's, no, uh, it's no mystery, of course, as rates have been slowly moving up and prices have gone up because of remote working and things of that nature. It's just, it squeezed the pool of buyers, which, which of course is why earlier 
My appeal to first-time buyers is to get into the game because it can be very, very challenging for you. Now, this, what I want to share with, with agents here is, when I see this, I think about what's kind of happening in the industry, and it unfortunately happens when the market is like gangbusters. Um, I've talked to a lot of agent partners out there who were working with you know, certain builders who they had great relationships with them in the past, and then all of a sudden, because things were flying off the shelf, they decided to cut commissions, uh, play games with the commissions and things of that nature. And, you know, listen, in this human experience, one thing we know is that karma is real. You know, it's, it's very interesting. You know, how, um, how someone treats you is their karma. How you treat them is yours. And so you always want to make sure you're doing the right thing. Uh, no one's perfect. Just always have great intentions. But you know that this cycle is going to change. That's just how it is. Go back and look at Ibbots and charts. That chart, of course, are, you know, the, the U.S. industrial age. Well, even back to 1900s, you'll see it's all cyclical. And you'll see, you know, where things lie in there. And so, you know, we've seen this before where, you know, anything can sell itself. And so builders start cutting you out, you know, and, and, you know, really any buyer wants to be represented should have fair representation wherever and should, you know, that relationship should, should be um, reciprocated regardless if it's new construction or not. Um, that's in the best interest of the industry because you have the fair representation. Um, but of course, we've had some challenges with some. What you're going to see, of course, as things change, as rates go up and, you know, homes sit a little bit longer. Um, builders are going to be coming back and say, hey, buddy, you know, let me back in. Help us, uh, you know, work together. And so it's <laughs> it's just, it's funny. I, I, I wish they wouldn't do it because it's just, it, it creates acrimony. Um, it's it's not in the best interest of the market. But, you know, um, there's there's greed always crops his head up somewhere. But, you know, I, we're seeing it too. You know, I remember there was a client we were working with, um, I want to say last year towards the tail end of, uh, the, you know, 2020. I want to say, and they wanted a new construction. Of course, they were retiring out, wanted something, you know, a little bit more smaller. Kids have moved on and whatnot. And so we were helping them. The team was helping them. And the builder said, well, you know, hey, even though your home can sell, we're not even going to accept your contract until your home is sold. And so these, these, you know, these retirees had to sell their home and move into an apartment just so they can qualify to get into this uh, new construction that took six months to build. I mean, it's just, it just really crazy things. Well, of course, as I you know, showed you with the graphic, things are changing. You know, I know firsthand, of course, we're helping clients where, you know, the, they're, they're in the, the process of completing the sale in their home. And uh, the builder's like, hey, no problem. You know, we'll, we'll take, we'll, we'll wait for you. You know, we'll take a, we'll take a deposit, take your time, you know, because they're seeing things are changing. And so, you know, I just wish folks would do a little, little bit better forecasting what helped the market stay, help, stay healthy and it'll help control pricing a little bit, a little bit, and it'll also keep quality and value great. You know, folks, we expect a great new year, um, of course, with, with getting better control of inflation. Uh, that that helps, helps out helping first-time home buyers and new buyers move up. And of course, you know, catering to our buyers who are in a, in a class that they're looking at, you know, getting their forever home. We see a lot of that happening as well. And so we want to help you. Our contact information is there. Give me a call. Again, I have Asian partners all throughout the country. We do loans all throughout the country in every state. And so there are first-time home buyer programs in, in, you know, that, are, that are national that we can offer to you. And of course, there's programs that are native to your state that we can help you with as well. Give us a call. We'd love to get you started along the way and help you start generating wealth for 2022. All right, so as we go into the new year, as we go into the new year, remember, set great intentions. This is your opportunity to set your chart way up high, to go into the new year with, with just hope, with zeal, with all the joy that you can you could muster. And of course, I've got some things I want to share exactly uh, right now for you. So the key, the keys to success for 2022. Number one, I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's, it goes with my motivation for the week. There's a graphic. A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Folks, I don't know what else to say. You know, this totally changed my life. When I changed, when I changed how I looked at things, the way I looked at things changed. And when I put gratitude in the forefront, then 
everything leaked. It seems like that was the magic elixir, the magic pill, the, the magic key to unlock everything that, you know, I'm living through today and all the dreams that are still set in, uh, in front of me. I mean, I, as, as you know, I, I, I come from humble beginnings and I, I, that's why I love helping people. And I'm just seeing uh, my dreams being realized because gratitude is always at the forefront. So for 2022, I want to encourage you to put gratitude at the height of the list, set great intentions, and don't let anything deter you from reaching your dreams. Thank you again for tuning in to The Market Update. I'm your host, Larry McCain with the American Financial Network. I want to wish you a joyous, safe, wonderful new year. Enjoy it with your family. Enjoy it with your friends. And we'll see you soon. Take care.